is the Antichrist, identifying Daniel's little horn in Revelation. We begin our discussion of the Antichrist with this person coming out of the beast that we learned about in the previous video, What is the Beast of Revelation? This beast is the satanic kingdom at the end of our age. It is a spiritual kingdom, not of this earth, but the Antichrist is a man that will help expand the devil's reign of evil in the last days. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 The hour of trial that is coming on the whole world. The Great Tribulation period is a brief group of events in the future that affects the entire earth as the greatest test in human history. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 and Matthew chapter 24 verses 21 and 22. People will align with the true God or with the devil. The Antichrist is the designated leader during this period that arises out of the global system operated behind the scenes by the devil himself. Before getting into the details, we should notice that God not only allows these events to occur, but wills them to happen according to his plan. Romans chapter 9 verses 14 through 24 provides the background about God's predetermination that we need to understand regarding the book of Revelation. We see this concept about God's will for government in Revelation chapter 17, verse 17. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out His purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. Also, see 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Why would God allow so much power to the devil and the Antichrist? Quite simply, it is his plan to test the earth, so he uses them for his purpose. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4. The Lord has made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. Authority granted to the devil points back to Eden and the original rebellion against God. Afterwards, we notice in Luke chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, that the devil had been granted temporary rights to the entire earth. 1 John chapter 5, verses 18 and 19, states the deep reach of his impact over the lives of all people. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. It is important to know the difference between the evil kingdom of the world and the kingdom of heaven. John explains the teachings of Christ about the devil and the world in many other passages, including these. John chapter 17, verses 14 and 15. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 16 Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. Once we grasp that Christ created the world for His purpose and ultimately holds the reins over the world, we realize it is His intent to regenerate it through the cleansing process described throughout the book of Revelation. This is to fulfill the promised land prophecies that include bonus upgrades after the earth is transformed. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 8 through 16. To do that, He allows the devil to carry out His will such as with the case of the prostitute we examined in an earlier video, Mystery Babylon the Great. The devil and his minions will dispense God's judgment upon false religio-political systems of mankind. Revelation chapter 19 verse 2 states that this judgment is credited to God alone, while Revelation chapter 17 verses 16 and 17 reports how his sentence will be carried out by the beast and the world government. Presently, Christ is in waiting mode while mediating sins until the devil is completely released onto the earth. Passages such as Acts chapter 2, verses 34 and 35, and Hebrews chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, 
are based upon the footstool reference from Psalm 110 that describes Christ's current position. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 21 through 26 explains more details about this concept that is related to the end times. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Christ being Lord over all kings of the earth today, Revelation chapter 1 verse 5, never stated that he has already fulfilled peace on earth, Matthew chapter 10 verse 34. He has obtained complete authority to rule and has the keys to the realm of the dead, Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. But he has not unlocked the door. Furthermore, Christ is not yet ruling with a rod of iron, as mentioned in Psalm 2, verses 7 through 9. This rod will come out at the second advent that is prophesied in Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. Peace on earth is to come at the beginning of the next age. Revelation chapters 20 through 22 depict peace on earth when Christ delivers the heavenly kingdom after defeating all enemies. The devil has been given certain authority until New Jerusalem comes from heaven. Revelation chapter 21 verses 2 and 3. Until then, he is waiting for the proper time. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 13 through 16. His kingdom on earth begins at the seventh trumpet that is concurrent with the second advent. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. Christ has all authority in heaven and on earth. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 and Ephesians chapter 1 verses 20 through 23, but he allows the devil to continue reigning over the earthly realm until the set time. The earthly physical reign of Christ will be announced at the seventh trumpet, with the mystery of God being revealed. Revelation chapter 10 verse 7. This is when he comes to earth and cleanses it. The timing for all events is in God's hands. Acts chapter 1. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. Now that we have briefly examined God's authority and control over timing, we notice that there is someone or something holding back the execution of His plan for the end of the age. It is the restrainer that is preventing the Antichrist from being revealed. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6 and you know what is restraining him now, so that he may be revealed in his time. The concept of restrainment is tied to authority. God has always been in control, as only he can allow the Antichrist to rise. These three passages describe this period of God's authority as he releases end-time events. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 6 and 7, and Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. Some believe the restrainer is Michael or the Holy Spirit. However, the primary meaning is about sovereignty. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2 focuses on God's providence over the situation, even though Michael is certainly involved during this period to do God's work. Michael helps carry out the plan to banish the devil from the heavenly realm because the beast system will be authorized to rise on earth once again. These developments allow the Antichrist to enter the world's scene. There is a rapid chain of events that occur after God's final countdown begins with the devil's release. Now we will examine the background passages about the Antichrist before trying to figure out all the references in the book of Revelation. He is first described as the little horn that comes out of the last stage of the devil's beast system. We start with the first mention of this most evil person in Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. The most important aspect to consider about this verse is that he speaks great things. This is part of the future abomination of desolation that Christ mentions in Matthew chapter 24 and Paul describes in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Daniel chapter 7 provides us with many details about the Antichrist that Christ does not repeat in Matthew 24. This is because Christ conveys we are to read and understand Daniel. Verse 11 of Daniel chapter 7 states, I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. The timing of the Antichrist is during the last days of this age. It is after humanity's last traditional government is abolished when the prostitute system is destroyed. Revelation chapter 17 verse 16. The Antichrist rises after this event to help fully establish the devil's governmental and religious system. The Antichrist is granted authority and allowed to conquer the saints for a short time. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. This is the Great Tribulation period. The events of Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 12, depict when the devil is given a brief opening to grant power to the Antichrist. These passages are at the same time. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7, and Daniel chapter 7, verses 21 and 22. As I looked, this horn made war with the saints and prevailed over them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given for the saints of the Most High, and the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. How do we know this is a literal event that will happen in the future? since Daniel uses a lot of figurative language like the book of Revelation. Even though figurative language is used, we can associate the timing and attributes of these symbols to actual events in the future. We need to correlate prophecies to find overarching themes. God wants us to read the entire Bible to understand His plans. Daniel chapter 7 verse 20 states that the little horn is greater than his companions, of the ten horns. Revelation chapter 17 verse 12 also describes ten horns. These are the ten kings who have not yet received royal power from the time when John wrote Revelation. From the two verses, we know that the ten kings and the Antichrist are contemporaneous to each other beyond the first century. Descriptions of the Antichrist from Daniel chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 13 parallel each other with these same identifiers. He comes out of the great beast with ten horns. He speaks complete blasphemy against God. He is allowed authority to war over the saints in the tribulation period. He is destroyed at the second coming of Christ. Revelation chapter 17 verse 14. Daniel chapter 7 verses 24 through 26 conclude the chapter with related descriptions of the Antichrist. 
Christ summarizes Daniel's prophecies about the Antichrist in one brief passage that begins with verse 15 of Matthew chapter 24. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Christ does not provide details in the following verses of Matthew chapter 24. He expects us to incorporate key prophecies of Daniel, chapters 7 through 12, which speak about a previous abomination that is a foreshadow and the final abomination of the last days. What does the abomination of desolation mean? Paul explains this event when he depicts the Antichrist being revealed before the great day of the Lord. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Paul sheds light upon the same abomination that Daniel and Christ spoke about. Now we understand the clear meaning of the great words and boasting of the Antichrist. He will proclaim to be God. Paul states that the Antichrist will take his seat in the temple of God, while Christ states he will stand in the holy place. This is the same concept using different metaphors. The bottom line is that there will be a great rebellion against God in the church, in Israel, and all throughout the nations of the earth. This is also the time that false religions are cut off. Revelation chapter 17 verse 16. It is not only that sacrifices of the Jews are affected, or that the church has a falling away. The entire earth will be affected. Revelation chapter 13 verse 7. Matthew chapter 24, verses 21 through 24. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, no and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or There he is, do not believe it, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. We can correlate all the abomination passages where the Antichrist is speaking great things. We find that he exalts himself as God and sets up the final false system of lies. However, it's only the beginning of the end. Daniel chapter 7, verse 8 11 and 25, Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 27, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, Revelation chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Later in chapter 13, there is a symbol of another beast who differs from the mouth coming out of the first beast. There are also similarities. The Antichrist and the second beast speak for the beast, or speak like the devil, so they have the same result. Their combined message spreads and has a dominant influence upon the entire earth. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 and 12. We notice a difference of the beast that rises from the sea. Daniel chapter 7, verse 3, and Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 compared to the second beast rising from the land. The metaphorical location of the earth reveals that the false prophets and false leaders are from mankind and come from the earth like Adam. The first beast is further stated to rise from the spiritual realm out of the pit of death. Revelation chapter 17 verse 8. These location terms lead us to consider their meanings. The first beast arises from death, the pit, and out of the nations of the earth, the sea of peoples. After it rises, there is a connection of this first beast, giving its authority to the second beast of the earth. Revelation chapter 13 verse 12. The transfer of power shifts from the evil spirit realm to earth. A large group of followers are enlisted, 
not just the Antichrist being in allegiance with the devil. We begin to conceptualize that the entire earth will move towards following the devil, except for those with names written in the book of life, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. It will be like the time before the flood, as in the days of Noah, Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 through 39. The spread of evil will become amplified until Christ finally comes to save the elect, Matthew chapter 24, verses 21 through 31, and punish the followers of the devil, Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. The Antichrist will be a man, but will come out of the first beast, Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. He will become devil-possessed or a conduit. This person will get the end-time program started so it can expand throughout the earth. The beast will speak through this person with all power and authority. Revelation chapter 13, verse 5 describes the channeling effect of the devil through the Antichrist. The one working behind the curtain is described in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders. There are singular and plural nouns that describe channelers of the devil during the Great Tribulation period. There is one male who is the Antichrist, and there are many false prophets and false leaders. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. The Antichrist will rise after the beast emerges, then others will rise after him. This is the great rebellion that will extend throughout the entire earth. We need to consider the related terms to see the effects. One is that he will be revealed. This is associated to the rising term we have studied. We see this term used three times in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 for the Antichrist, also known as the little horn and the man of sin. The uprising is linked to the timing of the revelation of the Antichrist. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3, Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 6, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. We know similar terms are used in this case, such as Christ warning us about seeing the abomination of desolation. The revelation of the Antichrist occurs visually and audibly. Examples are in the passages about the mouth that speaks great things, and about visual acts of signs and wonders. The Antichrist and his followers are predicted to produce false miracles in Matthew chapter 24, verse 24, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9, and Revelation chapter 13, verses 13 through 15. We already know that religion and government are affected by the devil's system, and we are also told that it will affect the most basic transactions of every person. Religions and governments vary throughout the earth now. However, they will be reduced towards a single system of one religion and one government that will include a required trade exchange system. This brings us to the mark of the beast and how it relates to the Antichrist and the coming world system. Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 and 17. Also it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, that is, the name of the beast, or the number of its name. Many people have tried to figure out the mark of the beast, or if the Antichrist is Nero, or the return of Nimrod, or some other famous figure. We have missed the details given to us, and the symbolic language that matches them. The mark of the beast and the Antichrist are great beacons of the warnings of for all humanity. These warnings are crucial for us to understand. Is the mark of the beast the number of man or a man? Revelation chapter 13 verse 18. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. 
In most other English passages, the exact Greek phrase translates as of man, not of a man. The root word can be an individual or mankind. Within the context, we should consider that all humanity is affected by the devil's spiritual influence. The beast's number means mankind in our interpretation, not an individual man's number like the Antichrist. Mankind will enter an alliance with the beast system to control religion, government, and trade. The key figure of the Great Tribulation period is the devil, not the Antichrist. His target is humanity. The primary focus of this period is that God will use the devil to test the entire earth. For that reason, mankind will go through the greatest refinement of all time. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 7, Daniel chapter 11 verse 35, Malachi chapter 3 verse 2. It is of utmost importance that we remember God cares about saving as many people as possible. Romans chapter 9 verses 22 and 23, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 3 through 9, and Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 23. The tribulation days are cut short, Matthew chapter 24 verse 22, by God to save the remnant of the world, Isaiah chapter 10 verses 20 through 23, and Isaiah chapter 66 verses 18 through 21. The day of the Lord is mentioned in Matthew chapter 24 verses 29 and 30, and the sixth seal of Revelation chapter 6 to bring to an end the greatest tribulation of all time. The second advent occurs at the end of the day of the Lord period to save the righteous and the survivors of the nations. Romans chapter 9 verses 27 and 28. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, Though the number of the sons of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth fully and without delay. We find interesting associations in these passages about the last days of those who do not repent and those who believe in lies. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10b Daniel chapter 12, verse 10b, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 2a. When considering all related scripture passages, we see that the Antichrist, together with other false Christ and prophets, are leaders in the rebellion, but not the focus. God's primary concern is found in the warnings to average people not to follow the path mapped out to the devil by these leaders. The last details about the Antichrist are prophesied in Revelation chapter 19 verses 19 and 20, Daniel chapter 7 verses 11, 22, and 26, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. These passages are the same event at the end of the Battle of Armageddon. It is the start of Christ's earthly kingdom as he takes over the earth. Revelation chapter 19 verse 20. And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. The term to be thrown alive into the lake of fire relates to the beast that takes its final earthly form in the body of the Antichrist. Daniel equated the little horn coming out of the final beast as its personification. The Antichrist and the devil's spirit become one after the restrainer allows the big reveal. Daniel chapter 7 verse 11 I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. The beast that rises in the last days is the devil's spiritual reign over earth as discussed in the previous video. In this session, we noticed that his spirit possessed a man as the Antichrist. Finally, the Antichrist is considered as the beast in Daniel 7 and in Revelation chapters 13, 17, and 19. 
This man began with the ten kings as the seventh head of the beast, Revelation chapter 17, verses 9 through 11, then completed the last earthly rule of the devil. This final beast, Antichrist, will be destroyed by Christ, Revelation chapter 17, verse 14, and Revelation chapter 19, verses 19 and 20. However, the devil himself, as an angelic being, will live on for a little while longer according to God's plan. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 4. The beast will come up from the abyss for one last hurrah as the Antichrist. However, he will never again have any spiritual influence over mankind's governmental or religious systems once Christ sets up his eternal kingdom. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9. And the Lord will be king over all the earth. On that day the Lord will be one and his name one. And Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering. Since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. For more information about these videos and the forthcoming book that provides detailed research, please visit kjsoz.com. That's k-j-s-o-z-e dot com. Scripture quotations are from the ESV Bible, the Holy Bible, English Standard Version, copyright 2001 by Crossway, a publishing ministry of Good News Publishers, used by permission, all rights reserved.